Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, Beaky here with the Untitled Game Show, back once again with another week of Let's Talk. And let's talk about a subject that we all have to deal with as gamers. The price of games, the way we access the games that we do pay for, and what's the right model going forward, which companies are doing it right, and which companies are doing it wrong. And I'm looking at you, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. If you guys want an all-digital future, then you guys might have to change your strategy because there are some retailers out there that are going about this the right way. And let's talk about the retail side of things first for the price of gaming. Who's actually giving discounts and actually making offers for gamers actually makes sense? We'll start it off with Gamers Club Unlock coming from Best Buy. Now, this program right here costs $30 for two-year membership. It gives you points for every time you buy games. You're actually able to get gift certificates. You get 20% off on new games. You get 10% off on pre-owned games. 10% bonus trading credit. Buy two, get the third one free. And all that great stuff stuff right there. Now we're going to talk about Amazon next. Amazon recently launched a new program that gives you 20% off on new game pre-orders and recently released video games for Prime members. Pretty cool once again, that's a good saving 20% off on a brand new games. You're going to be paying in the $40 range which is not bad at all. And then there's somebody like GameStop. Now how could I not talk about GameStop. Now, they're the master of the pre-owned. So if you're a pre-owned gamer, maybe GameStop will be best for you. You get 10% off on pre-owned games and accessory. You get buy one, get one free only on pre-owned games worth up to $55, which is not the best deal ever because you buy a $55 pre-owned game, you almost might as well spend the $5 and get, you know, just, just get the brand new copy because if it's a $55 pre-owned game, you might be wondering, why did somebody trade in the game so recently? I don't know. I don't know. And, of course, you get $50 in exclusive offers, points, Game Informer, and all that jazz right there. Now, there's other ways to get digital games for pretty cheap as well. If you're talking about the PC side of things, there's, of course, there's the Steam sales, stuff like that. But on new release games, somebody is doing it kind of right. There's people like Game... Green Man Gaming, they went ahead and do like 20% vouchers. They do 30% vouchers on brand new releases, Just Cause, XCOM. There's a lot of games out there that you actually could get for a pretty darn cheap price from Green Man Gaming when it comes to newly released PC games. And I don't really want to talk about games that are newly released, more or less than discounted older titles on Steam Sale or Humble Bundle here. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't have the biggest budget out there for playing video games, there's, of course, there's stuff like EA Origin Access, which was just released this week, or EA Access on Xbox One, which you pay $5 a month, and it gives you access to a library of EA games, and you actually get to try new EA games one week before everybody else. You get yourself 10 hours to go in there and try a brand new game, just like the game that's about to be released, um, Unravel, which is that really cool thing with um, Yarny. I think it's Unravel. Uh, is it? Yeah. Unravel is the name of the game, and the character name is Yarny. So you get to play that game for 10 hours for two levels. So that's kind of cool right there for five bucks. Is it worth it for you? Maybe not for everybody else. But if you're on a budget, that might be something you want to do. Just similar like if you have a kid out there who might be okay playing PlayStation 3 games, you could get them something like PlayStation Now, which is kind of pricey, but there's over 300 titles now on PlayStation Now. It could start out at a seven-day free trial. You have a one-month trial for $9.99, three-month for dollars Forty four ninety nine, and then right now they do have some type of deal for one year for a hundred bucks, which is still kind of expensive. But if you're willing to play PlayStation Three games a lot and don't want to buy a lot of brand new games, this might be something for you. And if you're even more of a budget and kind of a casual gamer, then there's even stuff like GameFly streaming. So GameFi streaming is allows you to play games on Amazon Fire TV or smart Samsung TVs where you can pay for packs of games costing from $7 to $10. In these packs, you can get stuff like Arkham City, Overlord 2, or Lego Batman games, or all the other Lego games anywhere between $7 and $10. Now, right now, there's only 50 titles in the service, so it's not the greatest thing out there. Some of the games are kind of older, like Dirt 3, but it's still a great game. But they do have crappier games like out there like Dark Void, which was one of the best games out there ever made. But still, it is an option for anybody out there who has an Amazon Fire TV or has a smart TV and some reason wants to play games on that. And then we come to the behemoth, the behemoth, the behemoth. So there is Sony and then there's Microsoft and then there's Nintendo as well. But unfortunately, Nintendo doesn't have any specific like discount program that you could sign up for and pay money for yearly or monthly. Now, obviously, with Xbox Live and PlayStation 4, I'm talking about PSN Plus and Xbox Live Gold. 
And here's the thing that I kind of don't understand with Sony and Microsoft. Now, they have talked about it in the past, they have hinted at it, that they kind of want to go probably this list, you know, all digital downloads, you know. That seems like that's the inevitable route, route for gaming. I mean, PC games have mostly become digital downloads at this point. You can not buy certain PC games still in stores with this, but not every game out there you could actually go ahead. Even big AAA games you could even get on this. And even if you get the, like a disc, it's literally just a, a case with a Steam code in it, man. I bought my Fallout Collector's Edition. It basically just was that. I mean, they had the disc, but the disc didn't even contain all the data for the game. That's the truth. Now, if Sony or Microsoft wants to compete with somebody like Best Buy, in this case, or Amazon with their 20% off on new games, they're going to need to start implementing a program like that for us with PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live. Because a 20% off discount is something that would actually get me to pre-order more games on Xbox Live or PSN. Or even Nintendo, if Nintendo would ever do some type of program that lets us save money or have access to a library of games. I mean, we're looking at a game right now, which is Titanfall, which I'm kicking some ass and as you guys can see, I'm actually good at this game, which I've said before, guys. No bullshit, I kick ass in Titanfall. I love this game, I know, you know, you know, you know. I like the game. I like the game. Because <laughs> I'm good at it. But the whole thing with Titanfall, right? When it first came out, and I was very critical of the game. You guys should look at my old videos of this game. I said there was not enough content for $60. You know, I bought the game hoping that there would be more to it. And I realized there wasn't. There was a lackluster campaign. Me and my friend Jim both played through the campaign together. And we are like, why the hell is this even considered a campaign? Like, where are the co-op modes? And those things were actually added into the game at this point. A lot of patches have been done to the game recently to actually make this more of a full game, more maps, more modes, better, like, you know, flow of everything, better loading. Like, they've fixed the game a lot over time, but it took a long time to get there. Now, I would say this game could have been sold for a $60 price, but not on release. But if you put out a game out there and you give a 20% discount, like on PSN or Xbox Live, you know, that would actually encourage me to... Pre-order more games like Titanfall in the future, which is the next Titanfall game that comes out. I'm not gonna pre-order it, not for sixty dollars. I'm gonna wait for the reviews. But if I could get it out there for in the forty dollar range, forty eight dollars, you know, with a twenty percent off or whatever it might be with PS Plus or Xbox Live, I would be more inclined to actually go ahead and be like, hmm. I might just do this. You understand what I'm trying to say here, guys? I think actually Sony and Microsoft are missing the point here where Amazon and Best Buy are retail stores are doing them better. Like, they're doing better than these people who are console manufacturers. Amazon it doesn't own any video game like you know consoles like they don't they don't own that they are a studio they make games amazon has a game studio best buy doesn't make games they don't own the platform but they're willing to actually sell things at a cheaper price to us as gamers and that encourages me as a gamer to go out there and maybe want to use their store um offers Sony and Microsoft, I'm sorry. Most of those PSN exclusive like discounts you guys give out every single month um, for stuff like right now, right this moment, I'm going on PlayStation and they have like, the PlayStation Plus offers. You could save money on Call of Duty Black Ops Ghost Golden Edition instead of being $60, $29.40. Who's buying Call of Duty Ghost right now? Like, you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, Dragon Age Inquisition. Okay, you could save, you get that game out to $17.50. But, once again, watch those, kind of for older games. Where are the newer stuff that people could save money on? And that's what my issue with it right now. Xbox Live games are gold. You know what, Xbox Live, the, if you go to xbox.com slash US Live deals with gold. You know what the first thing that shows up on Xbox Live deals with gold? Let me read it to you. Forza Motorsport 6 Car Pass. Instead of being $30, it's $19.49%. The first thing that comes up as saving is DLC. DLC. Not a new release game. Not something that, you know, would actually excite people from, you know, going to a retail store and spending their money there. And unless Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo, I don't talk about much about Nintendo in this because Nintendo doesn't really seem like they're ever going to move from their way of selling six games for 60 bucks. I'm just saying. But here you go, guys. Beaky here with the Untitled Game Show. That's just my opinion right there on this whole entire thing here with <sighs> games still being... Quite pricey, but there are some retailers out there letting us save money. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. I'll be back with more Let's Talks every single week. Check the schedule to see when it appears on the channel. Peace out.